The atrioventricular canal defect is one of the most frequent, the fourth most frequent, cardiac malformation and is the most significant one in patients with Down syndrome. There are two main forms of atrioventricular canal defect, the complete form and the partial form. The complete form by the presence of an atrioventricular valve with an associated ventricular septal defect a cleft in the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve and an atrial septal defect of the ostium primum type. Three different types of the complete form can occur based on the Rastelli classification. Type A. The anterior mitral leaflet is separated from the tricuspid valve and attached to the interventricular septum by its own cords. Type B, the anterior mitral leaflet is separated from the tricuspid valve but the cords are attached to the right ventricle. Type C, the anterior mitral leaflet is continuous with the tricuspid valve and there are no septal cords. In the partial form, the two atrioventricular valves, mitral and tricuspid, have two separate orifices and the ventricular septal defect is small. The presence of a ventricular septal defect, an atrial septal defect and mitral insufficiency causes both left-right shunt at both atrial and ventricular level and regurgitation into the left atrium. Mitral regurgitation and the left-right shunt cause an increase in pulmonary blood flow and the development of pulmonary vascular disease with pulmonary hypertension, which usually becomes irreversible after the first year of life. In partial atrioventricular canal defect, the patient is usually asymptomatic or may present minor symptoms of heart failure or respiratory infection. On auscultation, a holosystolic heart murmur can be heard in the lower left parasternal position with an increased second heart sound. Incomplete atrioventricular canal defect with shunt at both atrial and ventricular level and mitral insufficiency, symptoms usually appear during the first months of life in the form of heart failure, growth delay, bronchopulmonary infection and pulmonary hypertension. The symptomatology is dependent on the degree of severity of the lesions characterizing the atrioventricular canal defect. The most useful methods of diagnosis are electrocardiography ECG, chest radiography, echocardiography, cardiac catheterization. Electrocardiography of the atrioventricular canal defect usually presents right ventricular hypertrophy and left axis deviation. Chest radiography shows, in partial forms, enlargement of the right heart border with slightly increased pulmonary vascular markings. In complete forms, a global enlargement of the heart with a marked increase in pulmonary vascular markings. Echocardiography is the most important examination and, usually, allows a complete diagnosis. In rare cases, a hemodynamic assessment needs to be made to complete the study. Subcostal short axis view of a case of complete atrioventricular septal defect. Note the common atrioventricular valve with five leaflets opening into both ventricles. Complete atrioventricular septal defect shown on the apical four chamber view. The ostium primum type atrial septal defect and the posterior or inlet type ventricular septal defect are associated to a common atrioventricular valve usually with five leaflets. Cardiac catheterization is indicated only when patients are over one year old, when the degree of vascular pulmonary disease must be quantified, and in those cases with associated cardiac malformations. The left ventricular gram shows a suggestive picture, in which the left ventricular outflow tract presents a gooseneck deformity. Medical therapy is indicated for patients who have signs of heart failure and are waiting for intervention. It involves the administration of digoxin and Lasix. Corrective surgery is the sole definitive treatment for atrioventricular canal defect. Indications for surgery vary according to the form of atrioventricular canal defect. 
In the partial form, if the patient is asymptomatic, intervention for preschool aged children is suggested. If the patient is symptomatic, with signs of heart failure, intervention should be performed during the first year of life or when the symptoms appear. In the complete form, usually, intervention should be performed during the fourth to fifth month of life in order to prevent the development of irreversible pulmonary disease. During the first two months of life, in patients who present signs of intractable heart failure with no response to medical therapy, palliative surgical therapy may be carried out. It involves pulmonary artery banding. The procedure narrows the pulmonary artery in order to reduce pulmonary artery flow and pressure, allowing patients to reach the ideal age for corrective surgery. Atrioventricular canal defect may be associated with other malformations. Tetralogy of fallow, double outlet right ventricle, transposition of the great arteries, etc. In those cases, surgical treatment should be performed in two stages. Firstly, palliative surgery, shunt, pulmonary artery banding, etc. and then corrective surgery. Corrective surgery is carried out with an extracorporeal circulation. It involves closure of the ventricular septal defect, mitral valve reconstruction and closure of the atrial septal defect. The first animation shows corrective surgery of the atrioventricular canal defect that uses two pericardial patches. Firstly, the right atriotomy is carried out. Then, once they have evaluated the anatomy of the defect, surgeons proceed with the closure of the ventricular septal defect with a pericardial patch sutured to the rim of the defect. The leaflets of both the tricuspid and the mitral valves are then reinserted onto the same patch used for ventricular septal defect closure. By closing the cleft leaflets above the ventricular defect, the two anterior leaflets of the mitral valve unite in order to have a single anterior mitral leaflet. Now the ventricular septal defect closure is carried out. A second patch is sutured partly on the first patch, partly on the free part of the rim of the defect so that the coronary sinus opens into the right atrium. Finally, a continuous suture closes the right atriotomy. Corrective surgery of the atrioventricular canal defect that uses one pericardial patch may be carried out as well. The patch closes, firstly, the ventricular septal defect. The leaflets of both the tricuspid and the mitral valves are reinserted onto the patch. Then, the cleft leaflets above the ventricular defect are closed. Secondly, the patch, used for ventricular septal defect closure, closes the atrial septal defect as well. Finally, a continuous suture closes the right atriotomy.